potential NSA rule change before some of the state's most successful high school programs could jump a class. Schools will soon be voting on whether or not to pass a success factor in the state of Nebraska. If passed, highly successful programs could be forced to move up a level of NSAA classification. Executive Director of the NSAA, Jim Tenniper, who's been in that spot for 11 out of the last 16 years, has heard grumblings about this issue for some time. Uh, this, is, this is a situation that is certainly not new. In fact, it goes back a long way. If passed, individual sports programs would need to accumulate 10 success points over a four-year period in order to jump a class. A championship program would earn four points with the top title contenders also adding points to their total. But there is more. Once a school gets to 10 points, they can lose or gain points for a few other factors, including percentage of students on free or reduced lunch, percentage of students in special education, as well as a school's proximity to a Class A high school. This portion of the legislation has particularly gotten pushback from non-public schools. Doug Goltz, who led Fall City Sacred Heart to 16 combined state football and basketball titles, says while this is better than a previously talked about private school enrollment multiplier, it's still not a good idea. And these geographic and demographic features that are part of this proposal, more than anything else, they are an attempt to target the non-public school. Now, Goltz alongside Monsignor John Perkington, who oversees six Nebraska Catholic high schools, both say they would love to take on more special education kids if they were given more state funding. They also both say they would like to see more data from the NSAA that proves that kids that are on free or reduced lunch programs don't do as well in sports. Almost implies that uh, rich kids are better athletes than poor kids. And I, I just like to see the facts that back that up. But Tenniper, who does say the NSAA does not have a stance on this issue, believes non-public schools have a few built-in advantages. To some extent, they can control their enrollment. To some extent, uh, they have advantages that others in their same classification do not enjoy. Plattsmouth AD Sean Brothers says his school is hampered by a more closed, finite population, and so he does not feel as if the playing field is currently level. Big picture, what's best for students in the state? Is it best for the same schools to win all the time, no matter what, or do we need to have a system where it's you know, more fair? Private schools have dominated the landscape of high school athletics for some time. In football, volleyball, and boys and girls basketball, half of the first and second place medals have been given to non-public schools over the last 10 years, but those schools make up just 13% of NSAA schools. So why do private schools succeed when public schools do not? Well, Tenniper says there are several factors, including money. In fact, a student um, is in a non-public school, more than likely they're having, the parents are having to pay tuition. If they've got the wherewithal to pay tuition, uh, they probably have the wherewithal to get their kids involved in camps and clinics and whatnot. Fall City Sacred Heart lost to the house football team plenty in the postseason in the early 2000s. And Gold says instead of trying to find ways to avoid house, he instead tried to make his program better. I didn't try to figure out ways to eliminate them from being our competition. I tried to work harder and figure out ways to beat a team like that. This issue has split many ADs and administrators in the state of Nebraska. On the first vote in November, Half of the six districts in the state voted in favor, while the other three districts were against the measure. Co-head football coach at Bruning Davenport Shickley, Mark Roeder, led his team to a state title in 2015. He says what BDS has done can also be replicated at any school. Lift like crazy, we work all year round. And so, I mean, it'd be very easy to have a message kind of being saying, if you work really hard and you're successful, we're gonna make it tougher for you by moving you up the next vote on the proposal will be at district meetings on Wednesday, January 11th. If the majority of the districts pass it, then we'll move on to a final vote in General Assembly in March. Reporting for News Channel Nebraska, I'm John Kipper.